It's a party. This is pretty sweet. Look at Tara. Okay, easy there. This is, look at what's going on there. Oh, come on. All right. All right, with the Urban Arrow IDC 2021. I know a lot of you guys have been watching some of our footage from the Netherlands and these different interviews we did. I wanted to just make a little video on like what actually sparked that trip, which was the Urban Arrow International Dealer Conference. We've been working with Urban Arrow for a while and they're a cargo bike manufacturer, for those of you who don't know. We went initially to this event back in 2019 and got to experience the Netherlands for the first time, which was probably one of the best experiences of my life. I mean, as somebody that's really into bikes, it's pretty awesome to get to go to a place where there's bikes everywhere and it's just kind of a part of how you live. We got to come back again. It was just an awesome time as always. But I figure I'll just do like a bit of a recap of that experience, going to the International Dealer Conference and getting to tour. Urban Era had a new factory. So this is a special <laughs> feel gate? like a VIP going into this is the VIP? club. Not all that much has changed, but they've grown quite a bit. And one of the big things that they were purchased by Pond who's a large uh, privately held group in the Netherlands that is involved in all sorts of different things. But they've recently become the largest bike manufacturer in the world. I think the first brand that they purchased was Gazelle. We got to visit them as well, and we'll have another video on that in the future. They also own other brands like Santa Cruz, Cervelo, really just different leaders in their individual respective space. They added Urban Arrow as one of the leaders in the cargo bike space, so that was pretty cool. I wanted to talk a little bit about the space because it was cool to see and I figured you guys might be interested just to see how that's all put together and you know what goes on there. Now in the past Urban Arrow had kind of several different facilities. This new space they kind of combined everything in one. They have a really nice showroom that you walk in and you got all the different bikes in the display and they show you know some of the different uses like And then you see the family and some of the different developments they had there. They launched the anniversary edition of the bike, which is very similar to their initial version of like this like kind of raw aluminum look. One thing that's kind of interesting is the initial design, it's kind of evolved a little bit, but for the most part, it's mostly stayed the same. I think that that's a good indication when you have a good design, when you can stick with it for years and just make those incremental improvements. So moving on from the showroom, they had this whole event going on. So they have the space all set up for that. And they had some different presentations and talking about different innovations, different things that are going on. A big topic that's been coming up for everybody these days is supply chain. And they're, they're approaching it in a smart way where they've diversified the supply for most of their parts and frames and different things like that. Even their assemblers, they're also you know working, they're doing some assembly in-house and they're working with some other companies outside of their facility as well. I received the, 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 the boxes separated in the truck is this and this. And then I must combine the rear frame and the front frame. They all have the number 826, 826. And in doing so, it seems like that's what's gonna help them adjust to the varying demands and varying challenges that exist. We also got to check out some different ideas that they're working on. I'm not able to talk about all of them, but you know, there's definitely some uh, improvements that they have launched publicly, like a new rear rack that they have, as well as the sunshade. But it was really great to see more of the commercial stuff as we don't see that as much in North America, but it's definitely something that's growing more and more there. They have a bike called the Tender, which is really growing in popularity. It's kind of a bike pickup truck, if you will, that they have different boxes for and that sort of stuff to get to see like more of the inner workings of that bike and the suspension, different things like that. It's really quite cool. I have yeah. three pallet spaces 
for yeah one, one bucket. tender box yeah. uh, but I really respect you guys taking on that that unique challenge because you you're one of the few companies out there actually producing these larger yeah. Yeah. cargo bikes can I can I yeah, open yeah, this so this is the inside of a tender and we got a little door over here too then we got to tour the assembly line. We got to see, you know, more how they're building the bikes there. They're working to develop more of their resources internally. So uh, it's nice to see that. And I think that they're still in the process of getting everything set up, but it was good to get a little first peek on what they got going on. I was really uh, very impressed by the inventory that they have and parts and that sort of thing, because I think that this is the critical piece to hedge kind of the fluctuations in supply chain over the coming years. That's one of the things that's helpful when you have some better resources behind you and that sort of thing. So I appreciate the way that they're approaching that. Got quite a bit of stock here, huh? Yeah, we have around uh, 26, 2700 pallet spaces. Wow. Oh, I didn't even realize it goes yeah. back here, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was also pretty impressed that they keep good supply in stock for warranty support and that sort of thing is like they're making sure they maintain the service level for their existing customer before pushing on, you know, putting new product out there on the market. And I think that this is a strategy that most companies really should take, but unfortunately, I think many of them don't at times. So we got to tour around the assembly area and then fulfillment. They have some pretty interesting ways and they ship the bikes. We got to see just the scale of things. It's pretty massive. Uh, so here we have uh, stuff ready for, for shipment. This go to various uh, locations. This is the Holland. Germany. And we have also the box bikes. And the box bikes are shipped like this. Yeah. From there, we went into the service area. That was really cool. One of the things that's pretty interesting in the way that they actually uh, work on the bikes, where they hang them from a hoist, and probably an idea that we're gonna end up borrowing in our shops, makes for a pretty easy way to work with it because the standard bike stands can be pretty challenging for cargo bikes and that sort of thing, so. But overall, it was just a really good time, you know, getting to hang out with some other dealers, swap ideas and stories and connect. I mean, that's been one of the challenging things these days with COVID, not getting to have as much of those like personal one-on-one -on -one connections. Well, the video that's featuring Henning is our most popular video <laughs> ever. We also got to learn more about their cargo bike share system that's becoming quite popular called Cargaroo. We actually borrowed several of them while we were on the trip and it's been important for us to be able to film because for those of you who don't know, we usually film me riding the bike, Tara sitting up front. All right, we got one bar of battery, but we got two batteries. So uh, let me not drop Tara here. So we borrowed an Urban Arrow several times throughout the trip to help make these videos possible. And I'm hoping that we can see more of these things in North America. I know bike share is becoming quite popular, but cargo bike share is just starting to grow in popularity. We have some projects that we're working with, but we really hope to see this happen in more cities. And I'd be interested to know if you guys are seeing this, if you're hearing of anything because uh, that's definitely the, the types of projects that we want to support and encourage. Bike share is one thing, but if you want true car replacement, having cargo bike really can change the game, especially if you have kids and that sort of thing. If you want to have some additional capabilities, it can be pretty challenging to use a traditional bike share bike without the cargo function of it. I think that's about it for now, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know if you wanna see more of these or you know different things that you might like to see when we tour these different facilities. Certainly as travel becomes easier, I would like to be able to do it more because I think it's interesting to see what's going on, especially to be able to see this place in 2019 and then see how dramatically they've grown in just a couple of years and just to get a pulse on what's going on. And I think this historical documentation of these events events and companies and people is really important for us to help to understand like what's going on, what can we learn from, what can improve upon and you know continue to move forward in a positive direction. So thanks again for watching and thanks again to Gazelle and Urban Arrow for inviting me out to the Netherlands. I really appreciate it. It was a great time and I'll see you soon.